using this M1 MacBook Pro base model for the last year and it is a pretty powerful and amazing laptop. A few weeks ago, I have upgraded to this new 16 inch M1 Max with 10 core CPU, 32 core GPU, 32 gigs of unified memory and one terabyte of SSD storage, also the base model of the highest tier. Obviously, there is a huge price difference between the two, which would reflect in the performance and overall build. The purpose of this video is for you to see the difference between these two machines so you will have an idea of what the M1 Max can do considering your M1 MacBook Pro and decide if you truly need to upgrade. I am very aware about the cost and this is why I would like to share my experience with you as a consumer. This comparison is jam-packed so as always timestamps are available. There is a major difference between the 13 inch MacBook Pro and the 16 inch M1 Max. Obviously the M1 Max is a lot more chunkier, it is 66 inches tall, 14.01 inches wide and 9.77 inches long versus the MacBook Pro at 0.61 by 11.97 by 8.36 inches. The M1 Max weighs at 4.8 pounds whilst the M1 MacBook Pro weighs 3 pounds. If portability is something that is important for you then you would really have to consider your workflow versus the way you travel if you do so for work or if you take your MacBook with you. An added screen real estate really helps with productivity, but if you fly often or if you do long train commutes, then you may not be comfortable to use such a big and expensive laptop in public. In terms of weight, I personally don't think the 16 inch is too heavy and I know I can comfortably put it on my anti-theft backpack and wear it all day if I have to. Another design difference is that the MacBook Pro is no longer visible to the bottom of the monitor and instead for the M1 Max it is edged at the back and you will also see these little hard plastic feet which makes the M1 Max slightly elevated for better airflow. The cooler the M1 Max chip is the better it will perform in extensive tasks. For some professionals, the ports alone are enough of a reason to warrant them an upgrade. For the M1 MacBook Pro, you only have two Thunderbolt 4 ports and a headphone jack. So once you're charging your MacBook, you're only left with one port. And one isn't enough for your external storage, your card reader and other bits. So we all resulted in the dongle life. The new M1 Max have completely eliminated the dongle life for what I use my MacBook for. The MagSafe is brilliant and it is capable of fast charging. We will talk more about battery later on. You also have three more Thunderbolt 4 ports, a headphone jack, an HDMI port and a card reader. So for all of you creatives out there, there isn't really any dongle that you need at this point on a regular basis that makes working a lot easier. Because I have been so used to using this M1 MacBook Pro for a year, when I first got the 16 inch M1 Max, it was pretty magical the first time I saw the display. This M1 Max has a liquid Retina XDR display with a 1 million is to 1 contrast ratio versus the Retina display of the MacBook Pro. I just wanted to emphasize that both laptops have an amazing display with the M1 Max being better. It's really nice to consume from this laptop and I do enjoy editing videos in here. The blacks are blacker, the white are brighter and the colors are just a lot more vivid and looks real life. When my MacBook Pro was my main machine, I didn't feel like I was missing out in the display department. And I think that's important to mention just in case display is one of the main reason for your upgrade. When it comes to brightness, the M1 MacBook Pro can do a maximum of 500 nits and the M1 Max have doubled that to 1000 nits and even up to 1600 nits to some areas in peak brightness. One feature that the M1 MacBook Pro doesn't have, but the M1 Max have is a ProMotion or the adaptive refresh rate for up to 120 hertz. I'm no stranger to refresh rate. But for what I use my MacBook for, editing 4K videos in Final Cut Pro being my heaviest task, there isn't a huge difference. Of course, it is buttery smooth to work in the M1 Max. The bezels are also much thinner on the M1 Max compared to the M1 MacBook Pro, which makes the new MacBooks a lot more modern compared to the thicker bezels of the M1 MacBook Pro, which to be honest, looks dated. And of course, we're not going to ignore this notch. I personally don't mind it and like what I said on my previous videos, just like when the iPhone 10 came out, you will get used to it quickly, plus it doesn't really interfere with anything. I do wish Apple have incorporated Face ID though, so I guess that is something that they will do in the future. 
Work from home essentials are camera, microphone, and speakers. The M1 MacBook Pro's camera is 720p HD camera, which is similar to the previous model with a key difference of having an image signal processor, which is meant to make the image slightly better. And the M1 Max have 1080p FaceTime HD camera with advanced image signal processor with computational video. When it comes to the built-in microphone, the M1 Max have studio quality three array with with high signal to noise ratio and directional beam performing versus the studio quality three mic array with directional beam forming of the M1 MacBook Pro. So I am currently using the built-in microphone of the M1 MacBook Pro and we are going to compare it against the M1 Max. Take note, I am on the same distance between the two laptops. So I am now using the built-in microphone of the M1 Max and we are going to compare this against the M1 MacBook Pro. Again, as I've said, I've got the same distance between the two. So I'm definitely very curious to see if which one is better. Does this sound better than the other one or do they sound the same? Let me know. And lastly, when it comes to speakers, the M1 MacBook Pro stereo speakers with a high dynamic range, wide stereo and support for Dolby Atmos playback is really good. But I've got to say it up front, I am such a big fan of the speakers of the 16-inch M1 Max as it is definitely the best I have experience from a laptop. It has a high fidelity six speaker sound system with force cancelling woofers, wide stereo sound support for spatial audio when playing music or video with Dolby Atmos on built-in speakers and spatial audio with dynamic head tracking when using AirPods third generation, AirPods Pro or AirPods Max. Let's listen to a few examples and let me know what you think. I know my mom taught me that I figured why we fool around so little and we keep track of time being so serious idiots thinking it will matter keep me company downtown before the clock runs out sun is shining but the rain is welcome too friends and nearby don't need another time is not on my mind but then it's here oh must pass but I'm not gonna wake up wake up Both the M1 MacBook Pro and the M1 Max have the backlit Magic Keyboard. The M1 Max was advertised to have a more mechanical keyboard feel to it. I personally think that that is not the case. The M1 Max's keyboard are a bit bouncier and a bit more elevated in my opinion, but it doesn't resemble to that of a mechanical keyboard. As what you have probably noticed, the keyboard also looks different. The spaces between the keys are now black on the M1 Max versus silver on the M1 MacBook Pro. This is something that isn't important to me, but but I know some people were worried with the M1 Max being all black, maybe because dirt is a lot more visible then? I am not really sure. Another big difference between the design on the keyboards is that the touch bar is now gone. Most people that I know are happy that the touch bar is now gone. I personally really liked it. However, after using the M1 Max for a few weeks now, I can say in confidence that I actually don't miss it. I think the dedicated keys are amazing and there is also an emoji key which I use quite a lot. You obviously still get the Touch ID on the M1 Max which is great. The trackpads are similar. The Force Touch trackpads of the MacBooks are just the best in my opinion. As I have the 16 inch M1 Max, the trackpad is much much larger and is actually as large as the Magic trackpad. Because I don't have access to a plug socket, for the majority of the time during the day recently, battery life has been even more important for me. Apple claims that the M1 MacBook Pro will last up to 20 hours versus 21 hours for the M1 Max. In real life, considering my own personal usage when working and editing videos, the M1 MacBook Pro have lasted me about four to six hours when editing 4K videos in Final Cut Pro versus eight to 10 hours now that I'm using the M1 Max. So without a doubt, the already impressive battery life of the M1 MacBook Pro is now even better with the M1 Max. Another amazing thing about the M1 Max is its ability for fast charging. With the MagSafe 3 and 140 watts charger, Apple claims that you can fast charge the M1 Max for up to 50% in 30 minutes. The 16 inch M1 Max also has a unique battery feature and that is the high power mode. 
This basically optimizes your M1 Max even more when performing intensive tasks. Specs wise, they are rolled apart, and I know some of you may think that this is not a fair comparison, but as I have said, the M1 MacBook Pro is such a powerful and capable laptop, and not unless you are a creative professional, which this is the obvious target market of the Apple for these MacBooks, the M1 MacBook Pro, or even the M1 MacBook Air, which is the choice of my husband, who is an IT engineer, may be the better option for you. Let's now move on to the fan. A fan basically cools down your processor so it can sustain a performance when doing intensive tasks. Both the M1 MacBook Pro and the M1 MacBook Max have fans. Another extra detail that the M1 Max have to support the fan is these little plastic feet right here which slightly elevates your MacBook for better airflow. I would say based on my personal use the M1 MacBook Pro's fan is noisier and it does get hotter when I'm editing videos compared to the M1 Max. Both of these files were opened at the same time, but as you can see, it's still not finished rendering on the M1 MacBook Pro. And if I play it on full screen, I'm not getting the resolution that I need from it. Now we are going to try and add an effect. So I'm just gonna try to add stabilization to both. This clip that we're going to add stabilization to is 59.3, and we'll see how long this will take. Our next test is going to be the nighttime effect that is native to the Final Cut Pro and we're going to use it in this 59.3 seconds of a clip. I know you'd be asking me, Pia, why are you adding noise reduction right after adding a night effect? Please don't ask me, we're just trying to see how both of these laptops would perform against each other after putting two effects and for some reason I thought that would be a fun combination. So we are now going to export both videos. It is 828.6 MB and this is to a 4K. Overall, I absolutely love my M1 Max, apart from the bigger screen serving its purpose. Now that I have a different workflow and situation, the ports and the dongle life is now a thing of the past. I would say the M1 MacBook Pro is amazing, reliable and quick, but the M1 Max is just even better for what I use my laptop for. The battery is really impressive, the display is gorgeous and the studio quality speakers are like nothing I have ever used on a laptop before. I guess it really depends depends on your workflow if you would benefit from the specs. With a GPU like this, it is so beneficial for rendering, which you may or may not use depending on your workflow. Subscribe if you'd like to see how this M1 Max compares to the M1 MacBook Air, as that is going to be our next video. And check this out if you're uncertain whether to go for the 14 inch or the 16 inch.